Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I want to talk to you about the Battlefield 4 Community Test Environment, also known as CTE. Some people got invited into this. It's essentially a limited access version of Battlefield 4. It's PC only and it gets updated very frequently and they're testing out different changes, different ideas with the game. Essentially this gives DICE the freedom to make some changes that may or may not work on the fly and it's only going to screw up the game for a very small number of people or it might improve the game for a very small number of people but this will allow them to quickly change and modify the game get feedback almost instantly and then uh, apply those fixes to the other versions of Battlefield 4. Now CTE has been out for a week and we've already seen two substantial patches to the game client. You have to re-download essentially a new version of Battlefield 4 and then patch it to get these changes but uh, they have been messing around with the tick rate. This has been a very um, popular subject matter on trying to fix the Battlefield 4 netcode. People have been complaining about the 10 hertz tick rate. It has essentially been thought to be the leading cause of any sort of netcode issues behind Battlefield is just having a very slow tick rate. Now, 10 hertz means that the game is updating 10 times per second with new information from the server. Your computer or your Xbox or your PlayStation takes that information, interpolates it to what you're seeing on screen. Now, 10 times a second might seem kind of fast, but in actuality, it's very slow. A tenth of a second in a firefight is an eternity. It's more than enough time to zero in on somebody's head, uh, take the shot, win a gunfight, stuff like that. So if you can think about the fact that it's only updating 10 times per second, you have guns that are shooting um, multiple rounds per second, this is where you get so many kill traits because people are just exchanging so many bullets uh, and the game is updating so infrequently in comparison to that. So you get all these kill traits, you run behind corners, you get killed after you're behind the corner. Uh, well, the patch in CTE has updated the tick rate to 30. Now this is something that is actually scalable on the player side. It's become an option in the user settings. So if your computer can't handle a higher tick rate, either your internet connection can't handle it or perhaps the higher tick rate puts more strain on your actual computer, the CPU, then you can lower it back down to the 10 hertz. But 30 has made a massive, a massive improvement on the actual gameplay that I've had. Things feel snappier, they feel more responsive, I feel like I'm accurate when I'm shooting a gun I can make micro adjustments mid firefight death behind corners is far less common kill trades is far less common if the game's updating more frequently you're not doing all this extra damage and then the server updates and it's like well both players shot each other ten times that's a kill trade you know uh, it gets updated more frequently so there shouldn't be all this exchange of fire it should be the last bullet kills somebody then they die I'm not saying all the issues are fixed by no means are they all fixed but it feels more responsive when you die behind corners now it's just barely behind a corner like you just barely feel like you got around an edge and then you're dead as opposed to getting four feet around a corner or even further and then getting shot now to give you guys an idea of what other shooters have for tick rates, Call of Duty has been known to have a 30 hertz tick rate counter strike. You can actually scale it on the client side, but you can get up to 100 hertz if you want to. Sometimes that's uh, a little too much information. Uh, 60 is very common in counter strike. Now, there's a reason why DICE hasn't just upped the tick rate in Battlefield from the get go. It's like obviously a higher tick rate seems like it would be better. Why not just Put it as high as you can possibly get it to go. Well the problem is that there's a lot of information in Battlefield you compare it to Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike is very simple. It's a non-changing environment. There's not that many players. Um, it's got a hit scan gun model, basically a very very simple weapon damage model whereas Battlefield has physical bullets that fly through the air and have bullet drop. So there's a huge amount of information in Battlefield uh, compared to the average shooter out there which makes it harder to update the, uh, the essentially the netcode more frequently. And it's hard to say how this is going to translate into the console side of things. Obviously consoles have a limited amount of horsepower to work with, computers are a little bit more flexible, uh, the CTE environment 
so far that I've played on my end seems great, but I don't know what it's like playing on a really low-end computer. It might be very difficult to play on a higher uh, hertz tick rate. And of course, that's where the tick rate scaler comes in. So if you actually understand the system and perhaps understand why your computer's operating slowly, then you can adjust that slider to essentially get your game to run smoother. Now, this adds a lot of options in there, a lot of things that users will need to know about. Hopefully, the game can be updated in a way where it sort of auto senses what your computer speed is, what your internet connection is, and picks an appropriate tick rate for you based Based on that. Now, of course, netcode is my number one issue in Battlefield 4. All the other bugs and uh, balancing issues and stuff like that seem so trivial in comparison. So if netcode gets fixed, that's great, but CT is not just working exclusively on netcode. They got some other cool things in the pipeline. One that was just released um, in the latest patch for CTE was a reduction in basically screen shake. When explosions go off, your screen normally gets jostled around like crazy, making some intense infantry maps uh, just borderline unplayable and very hard to aim on your target. Well, that's been reduced a lot. I've been playing it. It works really really well character collision has seen a big improvement this is basically the effect when you're running near a teammate and things start getting kind of wobbly you kind of jolt forward jolt back a little bit it screws up your aim this has gotten some uh, pretty big improvements i won't say it's perfect yet but things are improving and quickly. I mean, it's been a long time since the game's been out, but in this short period of time, so many things have been fixed uh, or are seeing vast improvements that it really is just giving me hope for Battlefield 4's future. And I'm really not gonna kiss EA's ass about this. I mean, it's great that it's finally happening, but this should have been taken care of a long time ago. I'm sure that a lot of the CTE revolves around the fact that there's a lot of other games coming out on the front Frostbite engine that EA has a lot of money invested in, Star Wars Battlefront for example, so you gotta have the Frostbite engine working well. Doing a test environment in Battlefield 4 makes a lot of sense, and at least we're gonna see some fixes for Battlefield 4 before it hits the end of its life cycle. We do have two more expansions, and if CTE can get some good vanilla patches out, very soon then I think those expansions are going to be a lot of fun to play uh, and Battlefield 4 essentially is going to be like a revitalized game. I think it's going to bring back a lot of the community, restore faith in EA and DICE and potentially set us up for a really good follow-up Battlefield game because I have no doubt they're going to be using the Frostbite engine. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Is this going to atone for the state of Battlefield 4 or is it already too late for EA and DICE? I would love to hear your opinions. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.